So now that we're most likely seeing the end of the Trump era, it seems to me evident that we're about to go through um, the next major iteration of the conservative sort of populist movement. This is something I think has really been in the works for a long time. We've sort of been seeing the shift. We saw sort of the rise of this sort of conservative populism come into play with Donald Trump. Now, to be fair, it had always been in the Republican Party. I mean, it had been at the bottom level, but it really never ascended to the mainstream, at least not for a very long time. Now, if you're somebody that wants to go back and look to the past, like into the, into the 1990s, you can see that Pat Buchanan represented one inter- iteration of sort of this um, conservative populism back in the 1990s. I mean, he got very popular um, and was able to rally a good-sized base during the Republican primaries, but was never able actually to get into the, the White House or to win the nomination. But really, it was Trump who honestly took a lot of Pat Buchanan's ideas and actually made them workable and popular. He took his ideas and put them on a messaging platform, which was his personal messaging platform, which made those ideas palatable. But all the ideas from trade, immigration, you know, jobs, overseas, China, all of that stuff, very similar, borrowed essentially from Pat Buchanan. But now that Trump is essentially going to be leaving at least the White House scene for at least four years, and if it, unless he decides to run in you know 2024 and we see him rise again, what we're really going to see here is we're going to see the next iteration or evolution of the conservative sort of populist movement. And really, I think, from my estimation, if you're going to ask my opinion on it, is I see really two main figures worldwide sort of ascending into sort of the, at least the leadership role, at least the symbolic leadership role um, for the movement going forward. And these two figures are Tucker Carlson in the United States and Marion Marichal in France. These two people, I mean, they're, they're, they're different, of course. They're very different people as one is in America, one's in France, and completely different backgrounds. But they're both... I think doing something very similar in that they're taking the Trump movement and the Trump idea and they're making it more refined and intellectual and really um, expanding it beyond sort of the, just the hit you in the mouth, smash mouth football approach of, of Trump. And really, I think that both of these two figures have separated themselves from the pack on a couple of different things. Now, if we look at Tucker Carlson in the United States, of course, a lot of the things that separate him are he has a willingness, of course, to advocate against American intervention overseas in terms of foreign policy, staying out of Syria, trying to bring troops home from Afghanistan. He has that non-interventionist impulse, which is, of course, at odds with the Republican establishment. But also, he has an impulse towards criticism of of big business. from a conservative perspective. And oftentimes people in the Republican Party will be very pro-business and very pro, you know, because there's an impulse towards being pro-capitalist and pro-market. And it's not to say that Tucker Carlson is anti-market. He's definitely a capitalist and he's pro-market. But what he points out and he realizes that a lot of other people on the right don't is that the reality is the vast majority of large corporations do not have the best interests of the right in mind, at least not from a cultural perspective. Reality is political correctness and left-wing cultural ideology has become paramount in the business world. Um, The reality is gender ideology, uh, feminist ideology, all these sorts of liberal ideologies, um, they're basically essentially the doctrine of corporations today. The people that are firing people and, and, and basically destroying people's careers uh, for holding contrary opinions on these views are by and large corporations these days and not governments. Governments can do it too through anti, uh, free speech, anti, um, you know, for hate speech laws like they have in places like Canada and England and Europe. 
But in the United States, it's done through business. It's done through the private sector. The private sector is the one that's essentially eroding sort of traditional values and trying to inflate this, uh, these liberal values on us. And the reality is it's become profitable to do so. That has become you know, the profitable th thing to do because companies don't want to be boycotted. They don't want to be sued. They don't want to have those issues. And so they've decided that they're going to go along with these um, left-wing philosophies. And another area, I think, one area is people have talked about net neutrality. Now, that's one thing that conservatives for a long time have been against is net neutrality. But at the same time, you'd see that conservatives, if net neutrality were removed, may actually be on the losing end of that because that would actually give um, corporations like YouTube the ability to censor conservative speakers and conservative thinkers. And in that way, you may actually want to have a little bit more state regulation in place to protect your, your side. And so Tucker Carlson, on that end, has been more willing to criticize sort of the capitalist class and point out how they've actually not been the friends of the right. And that's one thing that has separated him from the pack. Um, in addition to that, he has a populist message that has resonated, and he has just been able to essentially dominate Fox News being the number one show on Fox News. Now, on the, conversely, on the other hand, um, we look at Marion Marichelle, and her separation is actually a little bit different because the past iteration for her of the conservative populist movement was Marine Le Pen, um, who a lot of people would actually argue is actually a socialist. If you look at her economic philosophy, she is in favor of more government spending on health care than the parties that are currently in power. She's in favor of taxpayer funding of abortion, taxpayer funding of birth control, she wants more government involvement in the economy than other, you know, just about any of, um, other candidate currently out there. She is very much in favor of socialism and government role in the economy. Even though she has this hard right approach towards immigration and you know cultural values, she's promoting sort of a conservative cultural ethos, but it's been marred with a more socialist economic philosophy. Now, Marion Marichelle, on the other hand, comes in, and she's taking the opposite. Maybe not the opposite approach, but a much different approach than uh, Marine Le Pen. She's actually gone, of course, and changed her name from Le Pen to Marichelle. And now she has been trying to rally sort of a conservative movement around her. And as a matter of fact, her, both her and Tucker Carlson actually spoke at a national conservative conference together where they were both speakers on the roll. And really what Marion Marichelle is doing is she's taking the same nationalist sort of conservative ideas from her, her aunt, but she is actually more pro-market and more pro-capitalist than her aunt is. And so she wants to move France away from socialism, more towards the market. Now maybe she'll recognize some of the problems that can be there as well, but she understands that actually the market is still something that conservatives believe in. And capitalism is very important. And she sees how Marine Le Pen is moving in the exact opposite direction of that. And in addition to that, she is really much more in touch with her French roots than her aunt is. Because her aunt is very secular, um, very sort of socially liberal on a lot of things. But Mary Marichelle, very um, intense Catholic, very in touch with the Catholic Church, very in touch with Catholic French culture. And not only would she bring, you know, a more capitalist, more economically liberal mindset, but she would also bring a Catholic mindset. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, I don't know. The big question for both of them, really, is are both of them willing to run for president in the, the next respective election cycle? Because there's been speculation for both. There's been a lot of speculation on Tucker Carlson. People have said, well, hey, Tucker Carlson might be the candidate in 2024. But he has said consistently, I'm not interested in doing that. I don't, I don't want to do that. But will he change his mind? That's what we're going to have to find out. And, of course, Mary Marichelle, on the other hand, also completely exited from politics, actually. Completely exited from the party she was a part of. But people are still floating her name as a possible presidential candidate. Will she do it? I don't know. 
But the reality is, she is more marketable. She could even run for the less Republican party. Less Republicans. And maybe she could win the Republican nomination of France. That's a possibility. Or she could run on her own party platform. We don't know. So it's really going to be interesting to see. Um, but I definitely think both of those figures, both Tucker Carlson and Marion Marichal, will be hugely influential in the next four years. And I absolutely believe the next four years are going to be extremely interesting as far as the evolution of the right is concerned. Because I feel like we've been through one era with this Trump presidency. Trump started something. He began a movement. But that movement is going to continue well beyond him and his uh, stay in the White House. And really the future of what he created is going to be fought out in the next four years. And if Trump starts Trump TV or he starts some other movement, that's going to be hugely influential in the direction of the country. But no mistake about it, both Tucker Carlson and Marion Marichal are going to have a huge impact on the future of the right going forward, especially in the next four years.